Hey everybody, Candidate here. Today I'm going to be talking about the DLC, Ashes of Ariandel, specifically how it relates to the main game, especially the rot that's infested the painting, Firelink Shrine, Bloodleth, the End of Fire ending, and the Firekeeper. Let's start with a quick recap. The painted world of Ariandel, a haven for Corvians, and all those who have lost something, is rotting. Originally the plan was for the fire in the painted world to burn it away, and a new world to be painted. But Sister Frida, one of the founders of the Sable Church, and Father Ariandel, the restorer of the painting, decided instead to let it rot, burying the fire and imprisoning the painter of the new world. Gale, a knight which serves the painter, asks you to go into the painting and fix things. You free the painter, then kill Sister Frida and Father Ariandel, allowing the painting to burn and a new one to be created. To explain what's going on here, I'll have to talk about tainted or impure humanity. I've touched on this before in previous videos, but instead of having to go through an elaborate game of Connect the Dots, the DLC lets me talk about it in a much more direct fashion. The painted world is rotting, which you can see everywhere. Pools of blood, filled with what is either fly eggs or fungus, rivers of filth, and these Corvians are even dragging their intestines around behind them. The reason why the painted world is rotting is given in the description of the Rose of Ariandel, a flail used by the bulbous father of the painted world to shred his own skin, producing blood to appease the flame, both a weapon and a miracle catalyst. Ariandel, being the restorer of the painted world, knew that it was painted with blood, and only blood could protect the secret. So the painted world is rotting because it's made out of blood, but there's more to it than just blood. If you listen to the painter after the end of the DLC... My thanks, Ashen One. I can almost see the flame. Soon, Uncle Gale will bring me the pigment. I wonder if he has found it. The dark soul of man. It seems like she's going to be painting the new world in humanity. And there are a couple of references in the game to the idea that the soul is in the blood. The main one being the soul of the blood of the wolf which says that the Abyss Watchers, by drinking the blood of the wolf, joined their souls with Artorius. So both the new painted world and the old one will be painted in blood, which contains humanity. Ariandel uses his blood to suppress the flame, which fits in with some of my previous speculation regarding tainted humanity. It's capable of suppressing and binding flame if there's enough of it, as opposed to pure humanity, which feeds the flame. I've also speculated that impure humanity leads to transformations, and this is pretty heavily supported by the fly things we see living in this rotted blood. The Corvian at the beginning invites us to lie in the bed's rotted blood. Make a fine home for you. So, go on ahead. Find one for yourself. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. But we never actually see any Corvians in them, just the fly things. The fly things look a lot like Corvians, and in fact, both them and the Corvians have grown two sets of limbs on their back. The Corvians grow two sets of wings, and the fly things have grown a pair of arms and a pair of fly wings. It's not a big leap to then say that these are Corvians, transformed by living in and eating the impure humanity in these pools of blood. Since the Corvians are hollows, it makes a lot of sense that they'd be attracted to lying in humanity, corrupted or not, and why the painted world became a haven for them in the first place. Parallels between what's happening in the Painted World and what's happening with the cycle of linking the fire seem pretty obvious. The painting eventually stagnates and rots, its inhabitants changing and mutating, needing to be set alight and repainted. In the same way, the world of Dark Souls decays and rots, its inhabitants change and mutate, and it needs the flame to be linked. We can use this parallel to shine a light on the events surrounding the linking of the fire in the main game. For example, you can compare Alfreda's role as someone who has buried the flame, preventing it from purifying the painting, to either the Sable Church in the Hollow Lord ending, they want you to subsume the flame, creating the Age of Hollows, or you in the Betrayal ending, she has, after all, stolen the fire and she is unkindled. We even get an explicit comparison between linking the fire and repainting the painted world. Well, sort of. Oh, my, thank you. I can hear the crackling from here, the sound of my home, the painting of Ariandel, burning away. 
When the world rots, we set it afire for the sake of the next world. It's the one thing we do right, unlike those fools on the outside. <laughs> this seems to be implying that, unlike repainting the painted world, linking the fire isn't properly creating a new world while destroying the old one. This fits in with the general theme of this being close to the last cycle, that linking the fire is giving diminishing returns, and that you can't really keep doing it. There are two pieces of dialogue that I think shine a lot of light on this situation. There's what Ludless says after you've been to unintended graves. Ah, found her, did we? And the black eyes that shimmer within, I see. Tis as if it were but yesterday. We did all we could to spare her from them. Much has happened since. Mayhap I should apprise thee of what the thin light of these eyes might reveal to the eyeless firekeeper. Scenes of betrayal, things never intended for her ken, visions of this age's end. The eyes show a world destitute of fire, a barren plain of endless darkness, a place born of betrayal. So I willed myself, Lord, to link the fire, to paint a new vision. What is thine intent? And what the painter first says once you've defeated Frida. Those who aren't akin to fire cannot paint a world. Those absorbed by fire must not paint the world. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten, Mother. I can hear the fire crackle. And soon, I will see it. My thanks, Ashen One. I will finish the painting of a cold, dark and very gentle place so that it might make a home for someone someday there's a lot to unpack here the way that Ludless says that once he became lord he painted a new vision is extremely interesting it implies that he actually created a new world he even uses the term painted and since this new vision was to link the fire it seems like what he did was create Firelight Shrine it exists parallel to the real world the one containing untended graves, in a similar way to the painted world. However, it doesn't look like it worked out. When we link the fire, we just kind of smolder into the big explosion we see in Dark Souls 1. This ties back into the idea of diminishing returns, but it's also similar to what the painter says about those who are consumed by fire must not paint a new world. Maybe this is what happens every time, and that's the reason why the fire linking curse exists. Each time you have the person linking the fire, creating the new world, which just leads to failure. It follows, then, that the Firekeeper having visions of the end of the Age of Fire is her having visions of a new world, the one that should exist if events actually worked out like the painting. During the End of Fire ending, she even rephrases her visions as being what may happen to what will happen, like the painter declaring the new painting will be a cold and gentle place. It's like she's the creator of the new world, and that fits, both with that the painter needs humanity to paint, a firekeeper is a drawer for infinite humanity, and that the firekeeper would fit the catechism the painter recites, someone who knows about fire, but is not consumed by it. The firekeeper and the painter actually have some interesting connections. The painter refers to her mother and has draconic features, like white scales and red eyes with vertical pupils, so it's a good bet that she's actually Priscilla's daughter, and there's always been an unexplained connection between the Firekeepers and Priscilla. Priscilla was supposed to be the original assistant for the main character in Dark Souls 1, before she was replaced with the Firekeepers. In Dark Souls 2, the assistant is the Emerald Herald, who we find out was born of dragons, but created by men to cure the curse, and the aged feather she gives you contains a direct reference to Priscilla. The DLC also connects the painter and the firekeepers. The paintings in the chapel all seem to be of a way of white maiden, wearing the saint's robe, just like Arena. 
and the archive that she's locked in, as well as the boss room, all have these decapitated statues. These are the same statues that you find all throughout Lothric Castle, and they depict either High Priestess Emma or the Shrine Maiden, both of whom are wearing the robes that the retired firekeepers in Dark Souls 2 wore, although obviously Emma's is a lot more stylized and formal. Now bear with me a moment. If the painter is part dragon, and paints a new world, and Shanlot was part dragon, and she was supposed to cure the curse, and the Firekeeper creates a new world in the end of Fire Ending, which would cure the Fire Linking Curse, then maybe she's completing what the Emerald Herald was supposed to do, and maybe she's part dragon. Now there's nothing explicit that points to this in the game, but you can make the case that she's another daughter of the royal family. She has the grey hair and pale skin of the old royalty. The crown she wears looks like it could be a pair with Lorien's. They have this contrasting material, and they both have centrally set gems, and it makes a lot of sense that the Lothric royalty, that are obsessed with linking the fire, would have one of their princesses be the firekeeper overseeing the process. I don't think she's Gertrude, because Gertrude's supposed to be mute, but Gertrude is a good example of what happened to the daughters of the Lothric royal family. She wasn't acknowledged as a daughter, instead being made the maiden of the queen, and of course, maiden seems to be the religious rank in the way of white that precedes being a firekeeper. Being the daughter of King Osiris would make the Firekeeper part dragon, and it seems like Osiris is even trying to make a part dragon child that would cure the curse. That would be why he's so obsessed with and protective of Ocelot, who is even named partly after the Emerald Herald. Her real name is Shanelot. But the biggest piece of evidence for this is what happens when you've placed all the cinders. She asks the cinders to acknowledge their true heir, at which point they promptly ignore you and go straight for her. We even get a cut to a different shot of her caressing them, to confirm that she's the one they're acknowledging. She's the real heir of fire, the real sign of the Lothric line, the child of dragons who will cure the curse and create the new world, if you let her. That to me is exactly the type of irony that FromSoft loves to put in their games.